It's a little bright. It's a little bright. <laughs> Hello and welcome again to Not Fake News. Trump has done it. Trump just did the unimaginable for taxes today. Even Reagan would be jealous. By Danny Gold. Too much. He's just... He's... They must really be sick inside. And when I say they, I mean... The left. Uh, the nuts. Donald Trump shattered all expectations again today when he made an unfathomable announcement about his new tax plan. President Trump was supposed to be signing an executive order relieving some of Obama's banking regulations when he made a surprise speech about his massive tax cut plan instead. A little bit of chess there for you. One for Donald Trump. He promised the biggest tax cut in history. Trump said during today's order signing ceremony that it would be Bigger, I believe, than any tax cut ever. Mr. President, it is a great honor to have you here at Treasury. Since day one, I have made clear that our priority in working for you is delivering economic growth for hardworking Americans. To this end, we are focused on achieving comprehensive tax reform and regulatory relief for the American people. Your core principles of financial regulations have been guiding our work here and will continue to do so. I am happy to report that we are busy in our review, not just of Dodd-Frank, but the broader economic framework as well. We have met with stakeholder groups of hundreds of people representing small banks, big banks, non-financial institutions, consumers, and regulators. This review is thorough and mindful of our goals. We look forward to delivering our findings in June. Your directives today further highlight the priority of this administration places on fair and efficient regulatory relief. They provide further focus and depth to our mission here. We're going to go back and look to see if the processors regarding orderly liquidation authority and financial stability oversight designations make sense. We now have a targeted mandate in place to review both. As instructed, I will report back to you on our findings. In the interim, you are calling for a much needed timeout from the Financial Stability Council's process for designating financial institutions is systemically important. Until that review is completed, we have agreed not to designate any new non-bank financial institutions, except in cases of emergency. Our goal is to make this smarter, more effective process that reduces the kind of systemic risks that harms so many Americans during the financial crisis of 2008. On orderly liquidation authority, we are going to look closely to evalu evaluate whether its framework is consistent with your core principles. We intend to provide a clear analysis of the extent to which OLA encourages inappropriate risk-taking and the extent of taxpayer liability. We will also note where additions to the bankruptcy code may be more appropriate avenue for resolving financial distress. Finally, today's executive order launches a re-examination of last year's major tax regulations to make sure they do not unduly strain Americans and the economy. The order calls for revision or repeal of harmful rules that impose unnecessary costs and complexity on taxpayers. I look forward to taking a hard look at the immense regulatory burden of our tax code, which consumes billions of productive hours in compliance costs. A significant amount of time has passed since the crisis. With the passage of time and with your leadership, we are now well positioned to evaluate what works and what doesn't. We believe in clear and effective regulations, but not regulations for its own sake. Where we can do so, we will lift the burden of excessive regulation to make sure that banks can lend, small businesses can borrow, and Americans' work can thrive. So on behalf of the entire staff here at Treasury, who work tirelessly to make this country prosperous and safe, 
I want to extend our warmest welcome, ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. Great speech. Thank you very much, Steve. Great honor, I must say. It's a great pleasure to be at the United States Treasury Department and to meet so many dedicated public servants. I went through that beautiful hallway with those incredible paintings of past secretaries and it was really very interesting i want to read every one i want to learn about every one of them but we have one that i hope will go down as one of the greats i think uh, hamilton is tough to beat but maybe you can do that too we'll take it right but thank you very much the treasury department is the guardian of america's wealth and a worldwide symbol of american prestige this department was first led by the same gentleman, Alexander Hamilton, a man who understood that the government must protect the jobs of its citizens and the wealth of our nation. Secretary Mnuchin, who I've known for so long, and he's so good and so smart and so financially adept, is working very hard every day to do just that, to protect the working citizen of America and to safeguard our finances from anyone, anybody, any nation who would try to take advantage of the United States. His vast experience and financial talent are now being put into service on behalf of the American people, and you'll see what I mean very soon. We have taken unprecedented action to bring back our jobs and return power to our citizens. It's been taken away. We've lifted one terrible regulation after another at a record clip from the energy sector to the auto sector. And we have many more to go, and that's going to be happening over the next, I would say, four to five weeks. Wow. And we've begun a historic effort to protect our manufacturing and our manufacturing businesses, companies, and our workers from unfair foreign trade. Protecting our treasury also means getting other countries to finally pay their fair share for the cost of defense and many other global projects that for too long have fallen under our guidance and unfortunately fallen under the United States taxpayer expense. And we're going to end that. We're going to end it quickly. We want fairness. We don't want to take advantage of anyone. We want fairness. We're now in the process of rebuilding America, and there's a new optimism sweeping across our country like people have not seen in many, many decades. We're here today to continue this great economic revival. I will be signing three presidential directives to further protect our workers and our taxpayers. The first executive action instructs Secretary Mnuchin to begin the process of tax simplification such a big thing people can't do their returns they have no idea what they're doing they're too complicated nice. this regulatory reduction nice. is a first step toward a tax reform that reduces rates provides relief to our middle class and lowers our business tax which is one of the highest in the world and has stopped us from so much wealth oh my and productivity Secretary Mnuchin is a leader great. in our effort to make America competitive again. We're going to make it great again. We're going to make it strong again. We're going to make it safe again. And we're going to make it competitive again. I'm also issuing two directives that instruct Secretary Mnuchin to review the damaging Dodd-Frank regulations that fail to hold Wall Street firms accountable. I mean, they've done really in many cases, the opposite of what they were supposed to. These regulations enshrine too big to fail and encourage risky behavior. We're taking steps to make our economy more fair and prosperous for all. As part of our broader financial strategy, we're working to open up lending to small businesses and entrepreneurs, including our incredible women entrepreneurs who are doing better and better and better. We want opportunity for everyone and in every single part of our country. 
Secretary Mnuchin and my entire administration are working around the clock to help struggling Americans achieve their financial dreams, earn a great paycheck, have a job that they love going to every single day, and have real confidence in the future. Together, we will restore prosperity to this nation, a nation that we so dearly love, and to bring people who call this home into a great, great way of living and a great way of life. They're going to be thrilled. We're going to be thrilled. And you're going to be seeing some very, very major changes. You've already seen them. Uh, I don't know if anybody's looked recently, but you looked at optimism indexes that are just coming out. Uh, manufacturing in particular, where it's up to the highest point it's ever been, 93%. It was a 27% increase over the past, over the last one. So I just want to thank everybody for being here. Uh, this is such a privilege for me to sign. This is really the beginning of a whole new way of life that this country hasn't seen in really many, many years. I want to thank you, and I want to God bless In my entire life. America. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. What's funny is the actual screen that I'm watching is less clear than the video you're getting through my lens it's odd it's never that way it's always the opposite right um but yeah let's continue so this is identifying and reducing tax regulatory burdens that covers a lot of territory too. <laughs> believe me Did, I watched a, a show the other day with President Obama, former President Obama, and he was signing about two, three different times. Not once he gave out pens. Never gave the pens out. And the way he signed it, it looks like he was signing X. I mean, his hand went zip zip, zip zip, and he did like 12 pens in a row. Zip zip, zip zip, zip zip, zip zip, zip zip. Fast as lightning. Can you handle that? I think I'll give it to my car. Okay. It's for my son. Oh, that's even better. I like that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hey, great boy. This is the subject of financial stability, the Oversight Council. Very important. It's a nice gesture, you understand? It's a nice thing to do, that's all I'm saying. And this, what he's doing, is so great! I'm so happy about this! This is the taxes! And remember, he didn't even tell anyone he was doing this. He's like, yeah, yeah, we're, we're gonna take care of this. And they were all looking into it, probably wasting their time. Yeah! <laughs> all right. So, let's get into this. Now, a plan like this would need to be able to pass Congress. While that should be easy with Republicans in charge, the way they acted with Obamacare makes you wonder, uh-oh, yeah, that's true. You know, I didn't think about that. So when he is planning on getting this done, when? Oh, well, only by next Wednesday. Where does he find so much energy? Well, we'll be having a big announcement on Wednesday having to do with tax reform, 
process has begun long ago, but it really is formally begins on Wednesday. Now that's the kind of plan I can get behind. Plus, he gave it an actual deadline like any good businessman would do. I don't know about all of you, but I think this is worth sharing with our friends, not only Trump supporters, but all taxpayers. Donald Trump's new tax ambitions are awe-inspiring. God bless each and every one of you. Let's send our prayers to Trump, his family, and his tea party, I guess. Amen. Don't know what that is, his tea. <laughs> See? They just want to throw you off. Crazy. But thank you for watching. Please share, subscribe, and like our videos. It's important. Once you subscribe, you also want to hit the bell because then we can send you the breaking videos as they're being made and you'll know what's going on before anyone else. And that's always good to have and good to know. And if you like what we're doing here at Not Fake News, please like the video. It's important and it means a lot. Thank you and I'll see you next time at Not Fake News.